Welcome everyone to the first subchapter of modeling reference gathering, an important, if not the most important step into asset creation, which is a crucial step for achieving a realistic asset. But enough of that, let's dive into some pictures. I'll explain how I find them, how I split them up, etc. Now, as you can see on the screen, there's already a bunch of images here. And they're not just thrown everywhere, they're quite organized. I wouldn't say it's perfect, no, not in a long shot, but it'll get me going and it'll make my life easier down the line. The first thing I do when I'm looking for reference is obviously noting down the model and model number. The model number is important because you want to find references according to your model. It could make the smallest of differences, for example, model 87 film, and from a distance, they would look the same, but they might have some slight differences in the model or texture to them. So always try to find references for the stuff you're modeling. What I like to do next is I try to look for some dimensions online. So I just Google model 88 film dimensions. And if I'm lucky, it gives me the exact dimensions. For antique stuff, it might be a bit harder, of course, but if you can't find the dimensions, you could try looking for the dimensions of an object that related to the model that we're making. For example, you have some um, film in here and you could look what kind of film it uses. And then you can try to find, like it uses a double eight millimeter roll. You can find the dimensions of one roll and work according to that. But we're lucky and we found some rough dimensions. Then I try to find as many references as I can. The more, the better, but don't go overboard, of course. I don't want to throw in all the stuff I find online. I try to keep mental notes of what I already have and what I still need. So I don't end up with like 100 images of the front, for example, and like five from the left side, etc. You get the idea. If you're having issues finding references, the first step is always Google and Google Lens as well. And if you never used Google Lens, it's super easy and it'll give you some great results. For example, let's try to take something very unclear. Let's tr take this manual, for example. So I take the sketch tool or the snippet tool and I just take a screenshot, copy it, and then I go over to a tab and you see on Google here, you have this little search by image. This is a um, Google lens. You click it and you paste it. Then it's doing all that little technical stuff. And there we go. You found more images of the manual. You found some other stuff and it leads you to Pinterest. And then you go through an endless loophole of finding references. If you do go down the loophole of clicking on images, opening links, you'll find some great high quality um, references images for sure. Other places I like to look for are Pinterest, any secondhand website like eBay. For antiques, I like to go to auctions as well because usually they post um, tons of pictures of different angles because they really want to sell their asset. Usually that works for rare pieces like swords, etc. Same goes for the secondhand websites for eBay. People want to sell their stuff and usually take a ton of pictures of different angles. Even though some might be low quality, you'll have to do some digging, of course. And finally, YouTube. It's a great place to take screenshots of the video. Usually the person pans over the asset with the camera, goes into detail on certain elements, and you can just pause the video and take screenshots. Now, as you can see, we have quite a bit of images here already. I like to organize them to make my life easier. So that's why I split them up into front, back, left and right side. So I don't have to go through a bunch of stacked images and try to find an image of the left side. And oh, I just have them here. You'll also see a bunch of notes. For me, they're just mental notes to mark interesting details, some parts of the model you might miss, etc. Let's go over a few. Right here, we have some grime buildup, some chipped paint, worn detail on edges. And in general, they're just nice texture and details. It's always nice when you can break up surface details on the asset, things like worn paint, smudged marker, a bit of tape on the surface. All of these additional details not only help sell the realism of the asset, but also provide some great storytelling elements for our prop. 
Stuff like the grime buildup right here that I marked is always nice to see. Some chipped paint, worn edges. It's always way nicer. You can have some stuff like that. It's also nice for me to teach you guys how to exactly do them. And then we have stuff like modeling guidelines. Stuff you might miss if you look at the general image of the asset. Here we have some extrusion that you might miss, of course. Some more modeling guidelines. You can see here it's kind of cut off and it doesn't go in a straight line here. Some texturing details you might miss, such as text in here is very small. And if you look at the image from a distance, you might not see it even on this reference. You kind of see it, but it's very minimal. Then you have some more modeling details. It's about the a guideline split because it's not 50-50. These are just important notes. You can always add more notes like I did this one when I was trying out the model. You can always find extra stuff like the interior. We won't be doing the interior for this tutorial. You can find high quality images of the text, which from that you can make an alpha of. I'll go over that in the tutorial later on. And some presentation ideas or just extras um, if you want to showcase your model. We already have a solid organized foundation right now. I think it's time to go into fusion and make the block out using the reference images we have. See you there.